Hi, this is Ushio, and this is Golden Treasure, the Great Green. This is a new, I think it's like a, like a strategy or something. But we're going to check it out. No, it's not a new game, it's a new life. A box without hinges, key or lid. Yet golden treasure inside is hid. What is it? Okay, so there's a quote from The Hobbit for you. <laughs> so we're going to get involved with this. This is going to be a big fantasy game. You are alone in the chamber. There is one wall which surrounds you utterly, in every direction and on every side. The wall is made of love, and it embraces you. Its inherent goodness is an obvious and complete truth. There is a rhythm in the chamber, a beat and a flow which has always been. It is the only way you can tell between sleeping and waking, and when awake, you can feel the rhythm, and when asleep, you cannot. What time do you enjoy the most? Um, enjoy being awake, or I prefer the quiet of the sleeping times. I mean, I do like my naps, but let's go, I enjoy being awake. Even now, in the beginning, you reach toward change, toward the future. The thrum of the rhythm promises everything to you, and will soon blossom into reality. Okay, we gained a large amount of air mastery, okay? Then after a time, you hear the voice. At first, you did not know that there was a voice, only a strange sensation unfolding in your mind. A soothing warmth, pulses of orange colour, and the comforting taste of brimstone on your tongue. And yet, you are alone here in the chamber. Could there be something outside? You reach out, forming a coloured echo in your thoughts, and sending it beyond your reality. And you are rewarded with an explosion of purest joy ringing through your essence and echoing through your mind. In time, you learn the differences between the emotions, the colours of the mind, that the voice outside the wall would pour into you through its mind song, and which you would pour back. And so you discover happiness and sadness, anger and calm, fear and curiosity, and an innumerable spectrum of others. And then the images come, pictures etched in neon relief in your mind by the song of the voice. They are images of amazing beings, of stately tree, an honourable, reliable stone, of chattering stream, a murmuring sea, and of the great river, who is also called Sun, and the great Bertha, who receives from Sun and gives birth to all things, who is also called Earth. Earth and Sun are the greatest of beasts, mightiest of all the animals, but next to them in might to your people, the true children of above and below, the kin unto each other, who are also called the Drac. I don't know if that's Drac or Drac? We'll go with Drac for now. The voice asks you a question. O tiny king yet to be, which shall you become? Sun, the radiant one, the great giver, who rules and slays and is slain and reborn each day. Or earth, who circle dances to sun's music, who nurtures, peaceful and omnipotent, births all good beasts, knows all silent secrets and abides forever. Okay, so we have a choice. For me is the power and the glory, and the rise and the fall both, I wish to be the sun. For me is the knowing and the healing, and the dance of the circle. I wish to be the earth. I think... I'm going to go with the earth. I'm going to pick that one. The voice responds by singing in a vision, and a feeling of cool, damp earth, pregnant with green life, into you. On this path lies a power hidden, but great. May you find a deeper peace amidst the violence of existence. Okay, we got a large amount of, what was that, earth memory. Time has little meaning in the chamber, marked only by the rhythm within you. The wall also seems to embrace you, just a little more closely with each moment. The voice from outside leaves and returns again and again, continuing to instruct you, gently and at a slow pace, ensuring that you can receive its song and build yourself around it. It teaches you of the many good beasts, those of fur and scale and feather and fin, some are swift, like the hopping long ear, and some are powerful, like the horned grazers. But all are good, and all have their own music. Most importantly, it teaches you the two great laws. First, you are a destroyer, to live is good, and you may only preserve your life by tearing away the life of others. You must a destroyer, find that which calls you to and destroy it, and take it into yourself and grow mighty. If you fail to destroy, you'll waste away, and be yourself destroyed, and all your music becomes silence. Second, 
you are a creator. All creators are one of two kinds. Givers, who give their essence during the dance of creation, and birthers, who receive the essence and weave new life from it, bringing it forth in the fullness of time. When you have grown great, you must seek out another who is also great and of opposite nature, and through the dance of creation become a source of the future. If you fail in this, the destiny of the children of heaven and earth will waste away, and where there might have been the echo of your music in the time beyond yourself, there will only be silence. So it is, was, and shall be. There's a brief silence, during which you sense there is space- Oh god, okay, go back up, go back up, what was that? There's lots to take in. There is a brief silence, during which you sense there is space enough for one question. What do you do? So basically, we're about to get birthed by the sounds of it, and we need to eat to survive. And once we're strong enough, we need to procreate the species or something. So yeah, we're gonna, gonna go forth, do some stuff. I ask how best to consume the essence of others. I ask if the voice is my creator. Was it one of two whose dance created me? I ask how to do the dance creation. I ask whether it's possible to live without destroying others. I quietly consider they used deep within myself and sought no answers from the voice. Okay, we have one question. What do we ask? Is it possible to live without destroying? Shall we try this one? Or do we embrace it and just eat a bunch of people? If we're going to go by wisdom, we're going to check all of our bases. Is it possible to live without destroying others? Be not crippled by fear, nor by shallow sympathy. There is no other way to exist. All of the uncountable beings in the one song are destroyers, great and small. Okay, so it's just the circle of life. We're going to embrace it. Such has been commanded to all by the beast of time and space, which is also called reality, and so you must accept it with joy. But you shall choose what you will become a destroyer of, and what you will not, and in that choice lies the power to bring change. Okay, we got some water mastery and some earth mastery. Beyond the two great laws sings the voice. There is one lesser law. It is not great, but if you violate it, you shall not be destroyed. Nevertheless, taste the truth and chain it within your mind. You must seek treasure. Treasure comes in many kinds, but you will know it when you find it. Treasure is something rare and of worth to all the true children of heaven and earth. By taking treasure as your own, you shall prove your greatness to other kin. Whether obtained by strength of body or of mind, or any other thing, it matters not. All that matters is that you must gather all treasures to yourself. Some are obvious, but well guarded, and some require little strength, but are difficult to find. None, though, are both obvious and easily obtained. Or, that would not be treasure. Okay. If I don't need to survive, why must I seek it? What is the greatest treasure? All treasures can be smelled and touched and seen. Would you give me a treasure, great voice? Uh, okay, what should we ask? What is the greatest treasure? You can tell from the cerulean tinge in its song that the voice is pleased with such an ambitious question, but the song which comes back is circuitous and uncertain. While some treasures are surely greater than others, no one treasure has yet been sung of it by the kin as the greatest of all. There was once a kin who gathered so much of one of the elements of reality that the elements ceased to exist at all outside of that kin's lair. There was once a kin who found a world, great and varied as our own, but as tiny as the seed of a smallest flower, and sealed in it a container which whispered great and mighty secrets in the form of a thousand histories of lands beneath the notice of even the smallest insect. So it's kind of like Horton Here's a Who, right? There was once a kin who discovered the deepest truth of growth, and grew so fast that Sun, the great giver, took notice and sang down to it with a holy song never heard before or since, and even these were not called the greatest treasure. Perhaps it doesn't exist, or perhaps you, at last, shall be the kin to find the greatest of treasures. Okay, so we got more knowledge. The voice's song grows softer, now I leave you, my kin, and my creation. You may never hear my song again, nor I yours. I have imparted the two great laws, as is my duty. You're a destroyer, and a creator, and these truths 
are woven into you like warmth into blessed flame. If you cease to be a destroyer or a creator, you will no longer be kin. And you know of the lesser law, the seeking of treasure, though you may survive and be well fed and strong of body, if you have no treasure, you will never be called great among the kin, and you will never know the pleasure of the dance of creation, and your creator self will languish in a frigid void. All other laws are false, those alone bind us. Remember that you are Drakin, Dragon, Dragon, Dragon? Okay, all other beings of this world must stand in the shadow of your beautiful and terrible music. The rhythm which you feel now flowing through you is the rhythm of life. To have the rhythm within you is to be alive. To be silent without the rhythm is the perfect sign of death. Nature shall now be your guide, companion and opponent, your friend, enemy, and always, always your teacher. There is no being born of earth, the great birther, and sun, the great giver, greater than you. The music of our people is great. Rejoice, knowing that your essence has been woven into such a body, and that such a fate is yours. When you at last escape from the wall which I have put around you, both to keep you safe and to test you, then you will be worthy to begin the great adventure which some call life. And with the final message, the idea of yourself exploded from potentiality into reality, the voice fades and is gone. You know that it's not going to return. And how do you feel about that? Happy to be alone, excited to begin the mysterious journey ahead, abandoned, admiration or nothing. Um, I'm excited. There you go. You're eager to show the world just how great you are, and how much greater you shall become. You dance, a tiny tiny dance within the confines of the chamber, and sing raw, pure songs of hope and longing into the nothingness beyond the wall. Okay. I think that's good, right? So, for a time, you are left alone within the chamber. You feel the measured beating of your rhythm within you, and drift in and out of consciousness. The wall seems to have gotten smaller, hugging you tightly indeed. Your rhythm has swelled into mighty chords, and your breath is fierce against your legs. Suddenly, without warning, the voice returns. It's not a measured song rife with ordered signals as last time, but a lurid gash of feelings and ideas suddenly thrust upon you. Beware the other seed, the no-tails, the flat faces. Beware their terrible music. Beware the seed of the others. Beware. And suddenly, there is an awful silence. A space left behind, where something should have been. No other voices enter your mind. A few times, you think you may be receiving a song, but it always proves to be simply yourself echoing tiny hopes, fears and dreams. Meanwhile, the wall, the wall which is made of love, and which has always always embraced you, is squeezing you very tightly. Its love, once so pure and benign, has become toxic. You're oppressed so mercilessly that you can barely breathe, and to make matters worse, you feel a horrible emptiness, a draining within your core. You gotta do something. Uh. Okay, we gotta push against the wall. It seems like we're in an egg or something, so we're gonna try and break out. It loves you, you know, but it must now be broken. You push and struggle, feeling your body move this way, then that way, but the wall thwarts your every move on every side. It's not through pushing, but rather through unfolding your whole self, limb by limb, and muscle by muscle, that you at last achieve the first true success in the music of your life. You hear, not with your mind, but with your ears, your actual ears, the cracking and crunching of the wall as it breaks slowly apart, and then see with your own eyes your first vision of true light. Okay, here we go. We're cracking out of this egg. And we're going to enter the world, finally. We made it to part one. Happy those early days, when on some gilded cloud or flower, my gazing soul would dwell an hour, and in those weaker glories spire some shadows of eternity. Okay, another quote. Here we are. We've broken out of our egg. You're somewhere inside the body of Earth, the great Bertha. Her semi-soft flesh is veined here and there with the grasping roots of trees, or blockaded by stones who stare blindly at you. 
The air here tastes of comfort and slumber, and your own body feels as though it's in good condition. But you feel a burning in your core. You know that it's the destroyer within, eager for sustenance to fuel your being. If you fail to find anything to destroy, the emptiness will overtake you and your life will be lost. You sense nothing to consume here, though. A few illuminating rays tumble in from above, but your vision is still dim and unsteady. Perhaps you should leave this place by crawling up the tangle of roots overhead. Whenever you consider a task which your will alone cannot conquer, you will get a sense of whether you will succeed or fail based on your elemental attributes. Climbing up the roots would require a certain amount of fluidity and flexibility, which are the domain of the water element. Alright, cool. Red indicates that you cannot succeed, at least not without problems. In your current state, uh, green indicates your feeling that you certainly can. Yellow means that it's too close to be sure. As you make choices, your health and energy may be affected as well. Success brings benefits, but be not too afraid of failure. Through it, all beings learn and grow strong. While success has little to teach, I'll choose. What do we do? Examines what's left of the wall. Claw your way through the hard earth downwards into earth's embrace. Claw your way into the softer soil sideways and upwards toward the light. Use your limbs and jaws to climb directly to the hanging roots. Okay. So... Aren't we supposed to be, like, earth type? So shall we try that? The dirt stubbornly resists your scrabblings, and seems that the floor of this chamber has been trod down by some great being, most likely your creator, and now resists your attempts to unmake it. You eventually give up, feeling slightly more empty than before for your efforts. That's not good. Lost some energy. What do we do? Okay, so red, red is probably bad. So let's go up. The labyrinth of roots follows your progress. You're not small, quick and flexible enough to clamber up and through them. And your efforts are fruitless. Okay, we're not doing very well. Examine what's left of the wall. Let's try all these options. The chamber of your creation seems so small now. Moments ago, it was your entire reality. Perhaps there is another reality beyond this one you now see, into which you will one day hatch. Have you any further business with the wall? It does not smell attractive. Uh, consume the wall. Perhaps it will ease the emptiness within. Yeah, eat that thing. Eat everything. The wall crunches and crackles pleasantly in your mouth as you consume it, but it lashes your throat. It is drawn down into your core, causing you to cry in discomfort. It also does not seem to do anything for your hunger. Oh, we're not doing very well. Claw your way through the softer soul sideways and upwards toward the light. We have no choice, we have to go. Your small but powerful limbs tear through Earth's flesh. It's an effort, but you succeed in crafting a small rough tunnel large enough to fit your body through. More light spills into the burrow as you emerge out of the ground, shaking your body clean. Okay, we have lost so much energy. Okay, we're climbing up. We are definitely some kind of dragon. This space is much larger than the last, and though you're still sheltered by Earth's body, Light is more plentiful here. You may be approaching her skin. A clean azure flavour slides across your tongue. Water, the comforter and supporter of all life, is here, gathered into a still body before you. Something within you resonates with it, drawing you toward it. What's your will? I mean, we do want that water. Get the water. You move closer. Okay. So this is our reflection, this is what we look like right now. Okay, and for the first time, you see yourself. Your body, sculpted and painted by time and space, is almost beyond description. Your armour shines subtly with Earth's rich hues, like the promise of precious things buried deep. Your feathers, each one dyed with more colours than you know the names of, long for the touch of air, and you're crowned with plumes so that all other good beasts may know your sovereignty. Your long neck, graceful limbs and supple tail transform every motion into a weaving cascade of flowing movements. Seeing your true form for the first time, you feel surprised, afraid, proud, peaceful. Hmm. Let's go with peaceful. Deep within your mind, you knew the truth of what you were, and even when you were in the chamber. Yeah, this is reality. This is the body into which your essence has been woven. These are the limbs with which you will walk the paths of this life. The teeth and claws with which you will meet out the judgment of destruction upon other beings. 
This is the fruit of your creators, and this is the body whose legacy may be bequeathed to others if you survive long enough and are found worthy. This is yourself, and you are content. Okay, good. Let's have some water, right? Yeah. You lower your mouth into the body of water and use your tongue to take some of it into you. It flows pleasantly down, trickling to your core, relieving you of a little of the emptiness within and soothing your essence. Okay, we've got some energy back. Water's reputation as a friend to all life is apparently well deserved. Your call demands something which water alone cannot slake though. Okay, we need some meat. With nothing else to do within this space, you follow the whispering air and light outward. Okay, so I think that that will do for our first gameplay. We've kind of chosen some of our alignments. We've been birthed, so we kind of hatched from our egg, and we're ready to go out into the new world. And that's what we're going to do in the next episode. This is Usho signing off, and hopefully I'll see you next time.